Good afternoon. This is Ian Trevethan. I am the Education and Outreach Manager for the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. And uh, this is our afternoon edition of um, From the Dome to Your Home, uh, as it turns out at my home. So um, still hanging in here. Hope everybody else is is doing well. Um, haven't been to the museum in a while. I wish I could uh, wander through there, um, but nonetheless, we will persevere. Um, so today, I wanted to start, I guess, a series of discussions about the Sternberg legacy and who the Sternbergs were. Um, I've had a lot of comments about um, the Sternberg legacy and, and who exactly these people were and what they did. Um, so today will be a very general overview, probably making for a fairly short live feed discussion today, but um, this is the way that made most sense to me to get started. Um, and again, we're, I am a uh, technical giant when it comes to figuring things out. So we're going to use the system that I've been using where I will switch back and forth between my computer screen and my face <laughs> and uh, we'll go from there. Um, the other, I guess, caveat that I want to add with this is uh, in regards to which Sternbergs we're focusing on, because we're located in Kansas, uh, we're going to be a little more Kansas centric. Uh, when getting into the details regarding who the Sternbergs were. Uh, so I will focus mostly on the Sternberg family members that impacted Kansas the most and kind of started out here. Um, but I will kind of generally cover um, the other members of the family that did really cool stuff uh, elsewhere outside of Kansas. So that's what we're talking about today is what is the big deal about the name Sternberg? So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to move Faye. Hi, say hi, Faye. She's being good today. No barking so far. So what we're going to do is introduce you to our, I guess, our <laughs> members of our of our cast of our story here. So going from left to right in this image, you have a couple of generations of Sternbergs. So on the left is George M. Sternberg. In the middle is Charles H. Sternberg. And to the right is George F. Sternberg. So it does get a little confusing because they tend to name each other after previous generations. So the two gentlemen on the left here, George M. Sternberg and Charles H. Sternberg, are brothers. And I believe Charles was the youngest of the brothers. Um, and uh, they kind of share a little bit of space together in the same time. So uh, as I kind of back up, this is just a cool picture, I believe, of George um, F. or Friar Sternberg um, doing uh, excavation out in the in the, the badlands of Kansas. Um, so um, this is who we start with, and this is uh, George M. or George Miller Sternberg, circa 1869. So the Sternberg family is from Ostego County. New York originally, um, and like many folks of the time, their lives were pretty interrupted by the Civil War. Um, and George M. Sternberg, who was a doctor, uh, joined the military, like many other doctors did during the Civil War. And uh, during his run, he actually saw some pretty crazy military combat. Um, on the front lines and uh, was involved in several major battles of the Civil War. But eventually he became sick, and I can't remember what illness uh, got him, 
but he ended up being taken off the front lines and um, he started managing uh, a surgery behind the lines in New England. Uh, and that's where he spent the remainder of the Civil War. And during that time is really when he started to, I think, begin his path as a very eminent man of science. So um, what ended up happening was he, working in the surgery, one of the big things that killed men, aside from bullets during the war, was disease. And George Sternberg and several of his contemporaries began to look very closely at how these diseases spread, which is actually kind of a timely topic for what's happening today. Um, and it was Sternberg and his colleagues that began to realize that when you put a bunch of men together, let's say you've got two men who've been injured and one who's come down with some sort of illness, and the normal practice at that time was to put two or three soldiers in a bed together to save space and resource. So what they discovered is if you've got one sick soldier in a bed with two relatively healthy soldiers outside of whatever injuries they're recovering from, you end up with several sick soldiers. So thusly, they began the practice of not putting a bunch of guys in the same space together. The other thing that they started to realize is that often the case was in, in medical hospitals, certainly during the wartime, um, during the, the Civil War, often you had surfaces that were permeable. So sometimes you had floors that were nothing more than sort of cedar chip and, and earth. Um, and whatever bodily fluids or, you know, liquids happen to hit that floor, it would soak in and that would become a problem for um, transmitting whatever germs or sickness would have been going around at the time. So they started or recommended the practice of sealing surfaces so that, let's say, the floors, um, the, the wood tables that they might have done examinations on, uh, any, any sort of bed frame, uh, any furniture was either painted or sealed and therefore was a an impermeable surface and could be easily cleaned. So you have the very, very beginnings of sort of awareness of how bacteriology sort of works, how things get spread around. So after the war, uh, Sternberg was <clears throat> transferred to what is now Canopolis, Kansas, in Ellsworth County, Kansas, um, and that would be Fort Harker. So that's really where the Sternberg history starts in Kansas, is at Fort Harker in Ellsworth County. And he was stationed there in, in the late 1860s, uh, shortly after the Civil War. I want to say he was stationed there in 1867, but it might have been earlier. Um, but uh, he was uh, stationed out there and um, purchased some land or talked one of his brothers into purchasing some land. Uh, and eventually the, uh, the family moved out there. Um, but uh, in the meantime, Sternberg was post-surgeon during um, a cholera outbreak on the fort, on the base, uh, and he actually lost his own wife during that cholera outbreak. Uh, but Sternberg was one of the, the surgeons responsible for sort of figuring out that partly what was going on, this was a, a bacterial-borne disease, and partly what was going on is you had all of the animal pens upriver. And what was happening is all that animal waste and grossness was running into the water which was also their drinking water. So it was at that point that Sternberg and his contemporaries uh, began to recommend not <laughs> letting your animals poop in your water source. So, um, you know, the, the cholera epidemic was horrible and killed many, many people. Um, and he was, he was the chief surgeon during that time. Uh, beyond that, 
Um, Sternberg is also credited with finding some of the first vertebrate fossils in this area. Um, I believe he's credited with finding uh, leaf fossils, uh, vertebrate fossils such as mosasaurs and fish fossils. But I don't want to get into too much detail beyond that because I'm going to talk all about George M. Sternberg tomorrow. And I've got some exciting ideas planned for tomorrow's discussion. So definitely stay tuned if you have any interest in um, the Sternberg legacy or early science in Kansas or rather early science in North America in general. So um, we're going to move on because I don't want to get too much into who these guys were just yet so much as how they're related to each other and what their connection is and why sometimes there's some confusion when it comes to the name Sternberg because, well, there are a lot of them and they actually ended up pretty far spread out. So um, when I was in college, I kept hearing the name Sternberg, but I never really focused on the first names. I just kept hearing Sternberg, Sternberg, Sternberg. And what I finally pieced together only after I became a graduate student at Fort Hayes State University in Hayes, Kansas, and started working at the Sternberg Memorial Museum, that there were actually multiple Sternbergs, and they were all very prolific and very important to science in general and paleontological science especially. So moving on, this is um, Charles H. Sternberg. That's Charles Hazelius Sternberg. And he was the younger brother of George Miller Sternberg, who we had just talked about. So that's his relationship, is he's the younger brother. And um, again, they started out in uh, New York, in Osteo County, New York. And um, the father of, of Charles and George Sternberg was Levi Sternberg, and he was a reverend. And I believe their uncle was also a doctor of theology. Uh, but they grew up in a, a seminary-type place. Um, and eventually, I think the father transferred Levi. I think he transferred to a, a seminary in um, uh, Iowa, I believe it was. Um, and then eventually they moved down to Kansas um, to, uh, I would, I would guess, uh, George Miller Sternberg's ranch. He had bought some property, uh, as I said, in what is now Ellsworth County. So that's how he arrives in Kansas. And I'm going to stop for a second. And this is a copy of, of, uh, George Sternberg or yeah, Charles, I'm sorry, Charles Sternberg's uh, autobiography called The Life of a Fossil Hunter. And you can see this is very old and very beat up. I was given this copy, oh, about five or six years ago, and it has become one of the most cherished things that I own. I absolutely love this book. So if you can find a copy, my guess is you could probably even find copies online um, in the National Archives. But if you get a chance to pick this book up, this is a wonderful, wonderful autobiography. It is very colorfully um, written and told. Um, the way Charles Sternberg writes is um, almost poetic. Um, it's it's very engrossing, and you, you kind of um, get your you find yourself getting really pulled into some of the things he's talking about. And he actually does discuss some of his adventures here in, in, in this part of Kansas. So those of us who live, you know, within a reasonable distance can actually go and sort of walk in the footsteps of the early generation of Sternbergs. So Charles Sternberg is really kind of the, the first of the really, I guess, prolific Sternberg fossil hunters uh, from an early age. Uh, I've got... Betty Sterling is asking, do I know where the original Sternberg Ranch was in Ellsworth County? I don't personally know, but I have friends with contacts who are trying to help me figure that out and go there uh, just so I 
you know, I don't want to, you know, dig around or do anything that, that is intrusive. I just want to see so I can visualize my own head. So the answer is, I don't personally know, but I do know people who know where the ranch was. Um, and I promise I'm going to follow up on that as the week goes on. Um, so hopefully, Betty, that answers your question somewhat. So um, Charles, from a very early age, knew what he was about. Uh, he wanted to be a fossil hunter. He was fascinated with fossils. He had a very uh, um, active, I guess, imagination in regards to uh, being able to identify the things that he was digging up and sort of imagine what that landscape was like. And you really get that when you read the the autobiography that he writes. Um, so I really, really recommend it if you, uh, if you can get a hold of it. Probably a really, really great way to spend some time um, while we are being forced to stay at home. So, well, nobody's forcing us to stay at home, but you know what I mean. Um, while we're quarantining to to take care of, of each other. Um, so I don't want to put a negative spin on that. Right. So Charles very early on, um, got involved in fossil hunting first in Ellsworth County and then sort of pushing out into the Western United States. And he worked with some of the really, uh, influential early, um, very colorful fossil hunters and paleontologists of the time. Again, I don't want to get too detailed because I'm saving that for later in the week when we can really get our teeth into this and sort of explore what these people did and what some of the adventures that they had were and what, in general, some of the most significant finds that they did or that they that they provided for us. So this is Charles Sternberg. So he is the brother of George M. Sternberg. So this represents the first, I guess, generation of Kansas Sternbergs that really um, impact the natural history of Kansas and sort of start that ball rolling of what this legacy is going to become. So next up we have, um, this is George Fryer Sternberg. So this is the son of Charles Sternberg the nephew of George M. Sternberg. So this is where things get a little confusing because now suddenly we have two George Sternbergs who are well known for their, um, their grasp of things scientific and um, they live, you know, they, they sort of overlap one another. Other. Um, so... Um, George, George, uh, the Friar Sternberg is really who our museum is named after. I like to say that the Sternberg Memorial Museum is named in honor of the Sternberg family, but really this is sort of the guy that had probably the most impact on the museum in its early days. And he was hired by what would become Fort Hayes State University to start a fossil collection um, on campus in a small building. Uh, and he did that. He was very prolific. Um, and as I've stated before, they paid him probably a very modest stipend. Um, but he was also an active um, fossil hunter who would sell some of his big finds to um, some of the big museums uh, generally back east. So uh, that's that's usually how he made ends meet. And while modern paleontology does not advocate um, usually the sale of fossils, um, this was common practice during George Sternberg's career and time. It was um, it it uh, it was all sort of in context for what was acceptable of his time. So. Um, there's there's no condemnation here. That's just how things worked because the focus at the time of fossil collecting and you know early days of paleontology was to try to reconstruct and figure out what these animals were about and share it with the public. So you know that's that's what their focus was was 
finding as complete fossils as possible, reconstructing them as best as they could, and putting them on display for um, public after they had been described and written about and published about. So um, Sternberg was active until um, the 50s. Uh, he passed away, I think, in 1969. Um, so he, he was pretty, uh, pretty, um, I guess, uh, instrumental in uh, much of the goings on at the university as well as um, what the museum was destined to become. So a lot of the fossils that are on display include many, many, many fossils that were found and and prepared and put on display by George uh, F. Sternberg. And uh, Cami, thank you. George F.'s uh, headstone is at the Mount Allen Cemetery um, in Hayes. So um, that's in Hayes, right, Cami? Um, that's that's the one that's off of Vine Street. Uh, I don't know that I've ever known the name of it, actually. Um, so he is he's buried there locally. Um, so, um, you know, he, he was uh, also our first official, I guess, vertebrate paleontology curator. Uh, since then, the museum has moved off campus. The small building that they originally um, used as a museum was busting at the seams, basically, uh, because what had happened is actually it was made up of a bunch of different collections uh, and sort of ended up merging into kind of one giant collection. And... Um, So, uh, and Cami, Cami, uh, is, is pointing out that, uh, there was not a private market at the time. It was just museums buying and that's correct. It's all in context with, with the time and place. So that was common practice for, um, not just the Sternbergs, but for pretty much, you know, all the big fossil hunters out there, they were all, um, making, um, making a living, sort of being Indiana Jones, so to speak, um, which is kind of cool to think about, but times are very different now. So just, just want to underscore that modern paleontology does not advocate the sale of fossils generally. There are a couple of um, exceptions where um, there are a few commercial entities that do a very, very good job um, of making uh, specimens accessible to the public and for science uh, research and uh, keep very good records and track of where those fossils go, go when they do sell them. Um, so there are exceptions, but generally we don't do that much anymore. Um, so uh, Cami says, yes, Mount Allen Cemetery is the one on Vine and 27. So if anybody local wants to go and see um, George... Uh, F. Sternberg's tombstone, it is in that cemetery. I think I might do that on, uh, on Memorial Day and, and sort of keep up your, uh, your practice of that. Hopefully we'll be able to move around by then. Um, so anyways, on to some a little bit more information here. So, well, this is a good picture of um, Charles Sternberg with George F. Sternberg outside of the original museum building that is now on campus. Um, and I believe, uh, I can't remember the name of the hall suddenly. Um, it's right next to Albertson Hall on campus. Uh, quick, somebody who's FHSU familiar, what hall is that that the museum used to be in? Because um, I'm live now and I can't remember my own name when I need to. Um, anyway, so that's a really nice picture because you can actually walk up to that very building and that's exactly where they were having their picture taken. That's kind of, it's kind of living memory right there. So that's, that's Charles and George F. Sternberg. And then I would be remiss if I didn't mention that Charles had two other sons. Um, there was um, Charles, also known, more familiar, McCartney Hall. Thank you, Cammie. McCartney Hall. That was, that's the hall that the museum originally was in. Um, so, uh, these are the two other Sternberg sons, um, and uh, 
the one on the left here, this is Charles or Charlie Sternberg. Um, and this is Levi Sternberg, um, who's actually named after the grandfather. So again, you've got multiple Sternbergs with the same name. Now, um, both of these Sternbergs didn't do a lot in Kansas. Um, they actually were a lot more focused on paleontology up in Canada and were very um, influential, uh, influen influential and um, prolific when it comes to finding fossils up in Canada. Uh, I know for sure that Charlie was at the Royal Ontario Museum and has a couple of uh, collections in his name up there. And I think Levi did work for the uh, Canadian Museum of Natural History, but I'm not 100%. So if somebody out there is better versed at this stuff than I am, um, feel free to correct any inaccuracies I might have. But um, the, these two guys ended up in Canada and were um, curating collections up there. Um, so that's kind of the full spectrum. So you've got, you know, the original generation, and then you've got the sons that sort of went out. And I, I do believe that several of these guys had sons. I know George F. had a son that became a geologist, um, but I don't know that he did a whole lot of work in Kansas or even a whole lot of work in North America. It seems like most of his work was, was based elsewhere. So um, just... Uh, real short um, background of who the Sternbergs were and why sometimes there is confusion about which Sternberg we're talking about. So if there are any sort of general questions that I could answer today, feel free to uh, send them in text comments. Um, otherwise, uh, I will start tomorrow looking at the life and career of George Miller Sternberg tomorrow. And as I said, I've got some, um, some ideas and hopefully, uh, they'll work. Um, if for some reason, um, the live feed doesn't start when it's supposed to tomorrow, that's because I'm experiencing technical difficulties and I apologize. Uh, in that case, the plan B will be, I will pre-record my program and I will just have to post it after I've recorded it but we're gonna to try to do, I'm gonna to try to do something new. So, uh, but I don't wanna give it away. So um, definitely tune in tomorrow uh, because we are gonna do some cool stuff because I'm tired of sitting in my basement. So uh, if there are no questions, comments, or uh, <laughs> criticisms, uh, I'm going to um, say good afternoon for today. And I hope that we will be able to talk again tomorrow. If not, definitely tune in and look for um, what I come up with tomorrow. It's, it's going to be an adventure and I'm super excited. So as always, um, please like and save our live feeds. Um, it's, it's really important to us that we reach out to anybody out there who's interested in listening to us ramble um, and uh, share uh our, our posts and, and feel free to make comments. Um, um, absolutely, Cami. She says, thank you for thinking to visit George's headstone. We would love to see that continued. Absolutely. Um, you know, at the I've lived in Kansas now for almost a decade. It'll be 10 years this summer. And, you know, I have actually fallen in love with this place and, and the, the characters that that have walked in the same uh, streets and, and same places that I'm able to go. And, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm loving it. So absolutely, I think that would be a really fitting thing for us to do uh, to keep honoring his legacy. You know, certainly those of us from the Sternberg Museum staff sort of have a connection to him. So um, I, I think that's really great. Um, so I'm going to sign off. I keep distracting myself. I, I say I'm going to sign off and then I get... Uh, distracted, but I love that. Send comments. Please, please, please send us comments. Even if we're not live, the more interaction we have, the less awkward this whole remote communication thing is. Um, 
Uh, I miss having my coworkers with me when we go on these live feeds, uh, just because I miss the banter. Um, and it's very strange talking to a screen uh, and my dogs. <laughs> so as always, I encourage whatever comments happen to come within reason. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to talk about, uh, you know, what, uh, well, never mind. Anyways, I'm going to go away now. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, thank you for watching and stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy. We will see you soon. Bye-bye.